Let's go to Donna in Lexington. Let's just move on from here. Le- Donna, what's up? Hi. Wow. I am talking to John Deloney. No way. I'm talking to Donna. This is incredible. <laughs> How's it going? Great. Great. Excellent. Excellent. Um, what's happening? Well, my question is, how do I have a fulfilling, passionate marriage when both me and my husband have different attachment styles? Oh, no. Are you an attachment style person? Unfortunately. Oh, jeez. <laughs> attachment style people. I Here's my, my picture in my head. There's attachment style people and uh, Enneagram people. And they put on those like ah. medieval clothes and they fight like in the public park with wooden sticks. That's what I imagine in my head. <laughs> LARPing. Oh. Yes. <laughs> wow, I don't even know that there's a word for that. So congratulations. So you're an attachment <laughs> style person. Um, okay. So t- tell me more about it. Is one of you anxious and one avoidant or one of you secure and one of you anxious or, or you, you've got different attachment styles and it's all coming down? Well, We've been having symptoms of sort of communication mishaps for the years that we've been married. Uh, And one day I decided, hey, there's got to be something to it. And I took a quiz online to solve all my life's problems. (laughs) Yes, the online quiz. Yes. uh, And found that I was anxious attachment. So I sent it to my husband and he was avoidant. Okay. And that explained a lot of things in our marriage, and it really helped us to communicate better, but it hasn't really solved, um, I guess, my issues and his issues, okay. which are, <laughs> I guess, I get this empty feeling when I'm not getting connection. Right. And so I go and I chase for it. And then when I chase, he hides or runs and it's very difficult yes you all end up in the dance right um that so many couples end up in it's just the dance one's chasing one's hiding and it just works like on an infinity loop and then you find each other and connect and it's going to be this way forever and it's awesome so hey um i I was poking fun at you at the beginning um john bulby is is a, a famous british psychologist he he came up with this idea of um, attachment uh, theories, attachment ideas, and there is some great uh, validity to them. I, I, I actually think that they've got, they're, they're good to know and good to understand it. And the great Mary Ainsworth took those and expanded on them. They're good stuff. What I don't like about them, the same as I don't care for the Enneagram, the same as I don't care for most, um, not what I would call mental health diagnostics. Like if you've got severe mental health disorders or some, uh, or personality disorders, they can be very helpful, but just run of the mill. I've got depression or I got anxiety. The reason I don't like them, um, especially things like Myers-Briggs, they, they become, well, that's just who this guy is. I'm a this guy and she's a this gal. And so, you know, and so I think they can be good for reflective tools an online quiz like, Oh, I, I fall into this bucket, but none of that matters when it comes to looking at the person across from you and saying, what do you need? How can I love you better today? Regardless of quote unquote, how it makes me feel. Now, of course this can be taken to an extreme. You know, if someone's like, I need sex four times every day, right? That's insane. Right. Or I need you to quit your job. It can get it can get way out of bounds, and so I'm I'm, I'm asking everybody listening to be reasonable here. But, um, I my wife and I have very similar dance that you and your husband have. Okay, which is I am anxiously avoidant. I'm a I, I have a terror. Um, I'm fearful of rejection, and when I come on, like I've got a I, I come in hot. I got a, a a lot of energy, and her body says, "Get out of here, hide." And it, and then it sets all my alarms off, which then in turn sets her alarms off. And then we have one big anxious house, right? And then we try to solve it through our various, you know, addiction ways we cover up things, right? So uh, what I'd love to do is actually just, just for, to placate me, um, where's your, where does your anxious attachment come from? Do you have somebody leave you in childhood? Was, was, was connection weaponized as a child? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Um, <clears throat> multiple stepdads. Okay. Dad not in my life. Uh, first love was pretty much uh, my teenage first love was a serial cheater. 
and physically abusive. Oh, um, so yeah, I had a little rough go of it growing up, but mm. I think as much as I like to say I'm over a lot of things, I can see the symptoms of what, and I don't like to, uh, be the victim in this situation. I don't like to think like that, but I do recognize the symptoms of ways that, uh, those things have affected me in my relationships as an adult. So but I want to, I want to give I you some peace. I want to give you some peace because you said thinking th- these type of anxious anxiety responses are at the nervous system level. And so mm-hmm. you can think through, no, no, no I, I've got a good one now. Like this guy's the good guy. He's, he's the one. He's not one of my stepdads. He's not going to leave. You can think that cognitively. And you probably did because you wouldn't have married him. But your body put a GPS pin in men who are supposed to keep you safe. Or men who say the words, I love you. Or men who say the words, I care about you. And it put a GPS pin in them and said, watch out. They're going to leave. They're going to hit you. They're going to cheat on you. They're going to destroy you. And so there, we, we hear the fight or flight all the time. but there's fight, flight, or freeze, and then there's another one that's, that's I don't want to say it's rare, but we just don't talk about it very much. It's fight, flight, or fawn. I'm going to get so nuzzled up and close to you. I'm going to be overly intimate, overly connected. That'll keep me safe. Surely you won't hit, or hit me or cheat on me if I'm, if I'm really, really close to you, right? And, of course, that, that can be insane, but it, but it can work too, right? So you're, what's happening to you is at the nervous system level, and I want to honor that. And probably, uh, where's your husband's, um, he's not here to speak for himself, but where, where does his root from? Have y'all talked about that? Oh, yeah. Well, he's wonderful, and his family is wonderful, but a uh, very controlling environment growing up, but very sweet people, uh, other than the controlling aspect. <laughs> so I think he... <laughs> uh, I love a good anxious um, avoidant person. Like they hit me, but they do it gently and it doesn't always hurt. Right. Wait, you're trying to make sure all the relationships are fine. They're fine. Cause they don't want them to leave. Right. Um, so maybe they are sweet and they were hyper controlling. And when people are hyper controlling, usually that means they're the performance of the people they're in relationship is going to determine the, how, uh, how much love there is to go around or not. And it's easier for him or they're just hyper, hyper critical, critical, critical. Why are you wearing that? Why are you doing? Oh, my gosh. Why are you fixing your hair like that? Did you brush your teeth? Did you? And then that body checks out. He's probably pretty talented at being um, completely alone in a crowded room, huh? Very much so. Yeah, you nailed it there. Yeah, he can. He can go inside of himself is what I say. So, again, let's throw let's throw attachment styles off. Okay, we got that figured out. You you. Your body tells you when you get anxious, we got to get really close. And his body tells him when he's anxious, we got to get far away. Okay. So the goal here is not to fight attachment, it, uh, uh, attachment styles. The goal here isn't to um, make each body feel unsafe all the time. It's actually the opposite. The goal here is to teach our body the thing that kept us safe when we were young is what's destroying our relationships in the present. And so we have to teach our body that we weren't safe then, but we are safe now. And that just, it's a skill. So he's not broken. You're not broken. Your bodies are doing exactly what they should. They're trying to protect you. They've seen this before. When you come in and you're like, oh, honey, honey, ah, and you're all anxious and a super attached, probably you're asking him why he's wearing that belt. And why are you wearing those socks with that shirt? That doesn't even, and he's like, Beep, and he just disappears. And you, and here's what's crazy. People with anxious attachment, they know when the person leaves. Even though they're t- in the middle of a conversation, you can feel them evaporate in front of you. They just, they just go away. But they're still talking. They're still engaged with you. And you know it. And it makes you bananas. And how I know? Because that's me, Donna. We're the same. <laughs> All right. So here's what you have to, um, both of you have to know. Your anxiety that you are trying to solve by nuzzling, by getting close to him. By taking dominion over him is what I'll say. Trying to control him. That anxiety is getting stronger every time you give into it. So this anxious attachment is going to get tighter and tighter and tighter over the course of your marriage until one of you just leaves. And I don't want to cast a shadow over you guys. Or, and when I say leaves, that could be literally they leave or they just disappear in, onto the couch. 
behind a six pack, right? The other side of mm-hmm. it is he's got to understand that being not being in true connection with somebody will kill him physiologically. His body will die because his body knows you are, we are all we got, brother. It's just, it's just us and us. And it will, it will, you've read the, the, you've heard me talk all the time about the, the data on loneliness. Okay. So here's what both of you have to decide to do. You have to decide we're going to enter into a period of time and it could be a short period of time, a long period of time. Then there's going to be some crisis in your marriage. Some, one of your parents is going to get sick. One of your kids is going to get sick. Something's going to happen and your body's going to want to drag you back to what it knows. And you're going to have to be really intentional there. But here's how we're going we're gonna to move forward. The first thing is we are going to consciously, when our bodies start to feel anxious, we're going to stop, take a huge deep breath, as deep as we can. We're going to drop our shoulders, let it out, and ask ourselves, what are you trying to protect me from here? What are you try- Why don't I feel safe right now? Oh, because he just walked into the other room. Okay. He still loves me. He's still here. We've got to check ourselves every time. And this will be tedious. And this will be a beating. And he's going to have to decide. Every time he starts to unplug, nope, I'm staying present. I'm staying present. What I found is I was too much for my wife. And what she found is she wasn't enough. And we had to meet somewhere in the middle. And now there's a safety mechanism that she feels, which she now knows when I'm about to pull away, she actually will lean in further. And I know when I'm about to lean in more, I actually retreat. And that's from, I'm trying to meet her needs. She's trying to meet my needs so that I can meet her needs so that she can meet my needs. And it just stays on this incredibly beautiful loop. Does that make sense? It does. It does. It sounds like a long way to go to get there, but I'm really hopeful that we can do it. it I a hundred percent you can. Um, and I think let's, let's stop the attachment language and let's start with my body tells me I'm not safe when you pull away. And you're going to know what those pull away things are. Write them down. Write them down and, and talk to them. Be open about them. When you do this, when you do this, when you do this. My wife has told me, when you stomp, when, you, when I come into the house, I just walk really heavy. When I walk into the house, boom, and, and my uh, living room is suspended over the garage. And so it, it, it just moves through the house. It just sends her body. It just, she's like, I got to get out of here. And when I see her like, make eye contact with me and bolt. I don't know why my body's like, she's gone forever. She's not, she's not. And so we, I, we've had to sit down and say, here's the things that make me feel unsafe. And so when I come in, not always, but often she'll stop and come give me a hug. When I wake up in the morning, she'll stop and give me a hug. Not because that's what she wants to be doing. She's got a whole list of things she'd rather be doing, but because uh, now I can, I can drop my shoulders. And vice versa. So all I have to say is I want you guys to stop using attachment language. Start being very clear about, hey, this action you do makes me feel unsafe. Will you lean in this way? This action makes me feel unsafe. Will you lean in this way? And if there's a a time when you start to feel, um, uh, your body starts to feel anxious, his body starts to feel anxious, have, uh, give each other permission to say, my body is telling me that. I'm beginning to feel unsafe and. Make that a part of your conversation in your home. And what you're going to find at first is you're going to take it personally. Like, I feel awful that I'm making you feel, nobody's making us feel anything. It's just our body's trying to protect us. But that's how we're going to have to talk about it. We have to bring it to the light. We have to say, I don't feel safe right now. Or my body's telling me that you're walking away. Let's start that language about "Ah, how can I feel more safe? And that's the path forward. You may need to get a book, like one of these little, I got to come up with a cool name for this, but a journal though, you write these things down where you take care of yourself. Body's trying to keep you safe. That's it. It's just doing its job. Now it needs to learn a new way to keep you safe, which is in connection, direct connection. And neither of you are using the other one to meet your uh, anxiety, to, 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 to quell the anxiety. You're with each other. Whew, fully intertwined on the same field. 